Welcome back to the Rhonda Swan Show. Well, today has been very special because I've had now two different rock stars in the studio here in Bali. And we have been having people from all over the world, but we've been doing them and filming them on Zoom, which gets really, really boring. So you have a very special treat today because I have my favorite designer in the house, Erica Pena. She's the designer whose multicultural upbringing has shaped her designs into culturally sound pieces of fashionable art and captured the attention of fashionistas worldwide. And I'm gonna call myself one of those. Uh, <laughs> she's the influence of her travels and cultures has led Erica to become a universal sensation. In 2006, Erica joined forces though with her sister, Bielka, and the results are luxurious. They are one of a kind works of art that have been featured in fashion magazines, worn by top celebrities, stylists, all while selling at the top boutiques in the world. Style icons like Beyonce, Rihanna, Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, Rhonda Swan are several of the designer clientele in an industry where breakout designers are far and few between. Erica Pena has shown that her designs have transcended ageless quality that proves she's going nowhere but to the top of this fashion jungle. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're All in here. one breath. <laughs> So I, good to have I you. I know. I just love you. I love your energy. I'm so honored that you picked me to be one of your oh my gosh. beautiful uh, designers to adorn your body every day. Well, so I, it is. I mean, seriously, every high buttercup. This is so special. We get buttercup in here. <laughs> uh, and everyone knows buttercup. Uh, I, Erica, I'm not kidding. Like this fabric, just the feel, every the flow. I could not find anyone that could like not only fit my short curvy body, but let alone in, in Bali. And sure enough, someone's like, you have to meet this Erica Pena. I'm like, Aww. what? And I fell in love. So yeah, I think I own every one. I know. <laughs> every, I have every color, I think every, every Eva, every, uh, what is it? We're gonna one? rename it to Rhonda. That's about. Perfect. Well, I use cotton just cause um, I was born in Puerto Rico. My parents are Dominican. Mm. So I am a Caribbean child or Caribbean queen. <laughs> Um, but I grew up in Florida, so I always lived in very hot climates. Mm -hmm. So cotton is like the linen or cotton, oh. but I feel linen is a, a bit heavy. Yeah, heavy. I love a light Thanks. flowy. My favorite movie was Gone with the Wind. Can you tell Come with on. the 17 meters? <laughs> so I decided to pick this mm. beautiful lightweight cotton voil mm. and just really focus in making the women, the woman, the focal, the beautiful, embracing her beautiful energy or spirit and making her feel like the goddess. Mm. So even if you're having a bad day, you put on leggings, Seriously. you throw one of the capes and, and you, you just go to grocery store, you walk around and then, uh, people will come up to you and you're like, you look fabulous. Oh, I'm, like, wow. so it's, I'm like a fake feel, feel good <laughs> doctor, I say, cause you know, I'm not really a doctor, but I like women to feel good about themselves mm. and to love themselves and we're here to empower each other so that's what i love about your show and what the message you give because mm. that's why i feel like this is we're in sync that's why we understand each other's vibrations it's, it's so true and little does everyone know we actually have the exact same print on she walks into the studio <laughs> and i have the same print on good minds think alike well leopard's not really a print it's a color oh it's a color <laughs> it's okay. a color it's our color it's a ronda color okay yeah it is it really is so let's go back though how did you even get into this i mean your clothes have now been worn all over the world obviously we have a beautiful studio here in bali that you you know have but how did it start? Like, where did you get all of this love from design? Well, I've been designing since I can remember. Literally, my mom told me when I was four, three or four, I like, I, I barely speak, but I told her I was going to be a designer. I know, it's crazy. Mm. And that I was going to sell worldwide and I was going to live in Paris and New York. And you tell and, her this. Yes, and I would be sketching. I always mm. don't recall not wanting to be a designer which is that's why i love with your daughter yeah. too i was like yeah i understand yeah. it because i've just always and i remember like in my hometown kids i went to kindergarten they're like oh my god i remember you telling us you want to be a designer i'm like i know it's crazy so it was just that love and that just knowing like i was born into it and um and the craziest thing is 
I had a picture of Bali because I used to do these collages and I cut it out and I'd put these collages of places I want to visit in my sketchbook. And one of the places I said that I would live was Bali, but I didn't know the younger. name of it. Yeah, I was seven. Oh. I didn't know the name of it. I just, I think I'd, I'd learned English recently. <laughs> no, I couldn't even read it. So I like literally just put the photo and I put it in a stamp. And when I went to visit my mom recently, I got all my little journals because I keep journals. No way. And I went through it to show my daughter and to show my husband. And I saw that and I'm like, oh my God, I was meant to be. Wow. I mean, this, this is like, you know, people around here like, oh, you guys live in Bali. It's a little woo woo. But this is some real stuff. Yeah. You know, like, so you were young, so you already knew, because that's how hanalei has been. She's just been constantly sketching, you know, just constantly yes. and doing her thing. So you already knew. And then when did it take off? Like, you went you went to school? Like, what did you... So I, I went to Parsons. But before I went to Parsons, I went to a another really great school in Miami, Miami International mm -hmm. Fashion School of Art. And because I felt I wasn't good enough to go to Parsons yet. And I applied for a scholarship and I was given the scholarship by Tim Gunn. So Tim Gunn was oh the gosh. dean of Parsons. No way. Yeah. Yeah. We were like the largest graduating class. We were 88 students. So Tim, no, he would come through the class. Oh, Erica Pena, you crazy. Because I'd run around like with hundreds Dominican of fabrics girls. and dancing. <laughs> exactly. Dancing and stuff. So, um, he loved, I did like a Mad Max theme project and he loved it. And he's like, that's it. And the only two people, I was one of the ones that got the scholarship. And that's how I got into Parsons. And then um, my senior year, Donna Karen picked me as one of the students to mentor because um, like Mark Jacobs, um, I forget what her name is. She's really, ah. anyways, like Calvin Klein, like a bunch of different like top Corey designers Birch. from New York mm. go and do a mentor to, to senior project, to senior students for the senior project. So I got Donna Karen and she loved it so much. I got, I was offered a position after there and then afterwards, sorry. And then afterwards I went on to design for Josie Notori and at Josie Notori I designed like laces and embroideries wow. and it was all lace and um, lingerie. So it was, it was good working in all these different places and learning. And then I thought I was ready to launch my own line at, at 23. Boy, did I have a lot to learn, but that really motivated me to really pursue it because that was the first company I started. It was called Epe. I did all my own sewing, all my own cutting, all my own patterns. And I was, after that, I was like, either I stay with this or I leave this. Yeah. So, um, I kept doing the freelance. I kept doing everything. And I started helping a designer called Carlos Campos. He was my ex-boyfriend and I helped him launch his brand. He's a successful menswear designer now. And um, during that time, I started repping brands. So I started repping his brand because people would come in and they just loved my advice and I would I could sell them any. I'd be like, like you were an influencer this, before that, you were an influencer. That. No. I was like, don't wear this. So they're like, oh, can we write you an order? So like in one day I'd do like $15,000 and people were like, oh my God, you should have a showroom. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm a designer. And then I'm like, well, maybe I could do this for a while because this could be kind of interesting. And I love that I did that. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for that. Wow. So I took a break from the designing. I started repping brands and then that brought me back to Puerto Rico because I went for one of my trips and um, the government had a program to launch Puerto Rican designers worldwide. They offered me um, the director position to select designers that were ready to sell worldwide and go sell their brand. So I was doing like 30 trade shows a year, organizing, traveling, and it was amazing. Exhausting? Exhausting, but... <laughs> I was awesome. in my 20s, yeah, 20s. So I know. Like, <laughs> you don't sleep. Yeah, right. So um, I am so like lucky to have done that. I feel like it was meant to be. Of course, um, the project didn't go as it should, and they didn't pay me. <laughs> so, oh, but I'm, I'm very grateful to it. For every bad thing, a good thing comes yeah, out of it. I feel right. like. So um, I ended up 
having to, I was like, okay, what do I have? Because mama needs to pay rent. I got to make it. I'm not going to need call. to shop. Exactly. I'm not going to call anybody. And I got myself into this and I'm going to get myself out. I was praying. I was praying and praying. And I have this beautiful shell knacker. Like it's all these shell knackers from Bali lamp praying and praying, God, please show me a sign. What should I do? Should I go back to York? And boom, three in the morning, it's like, you need to make earrings out of this lamp. I was like, did I just hear that? Am I delusional or did uh -uh. I hear that voice? And I took down the lamp and made my first earrings. Uh -uh. And I took like, I literally, I went to my friend's salon. I sold them all. Literally, I, it, it was crazy. And then I went back to the store. I was like, what more, do you have more lamps? And I bought, they had three lamps left. <laughs> and I was just Googling how to make earrings and I had friends that, um, that I, or like clients that I rep their brands of jewelry. And they're like, oh, we'll come and help you and teach you. And they would teach me, I would take like little classes, techniques and learning different techniques to do. And um, my best friend, Andrea, who's a top stylist now in Charleston, came down from New York for her bachelorette. And I gifted her two earrings in Puerto Rico. She took them back to shoot for InStyle Magazine. And that was my first editorial. The earrings. The earrings. The earrings that got you out of the, the doldrums. Yes. So and then, you handmade. That I handmade with crystals. And they're they're beautiful. Like they're and but it was like such a symbol, like mm. Bali, like I, I it was like I was meant to be here. Mm, it was just it kept in. repeating. Yeah, it was right. like the universe kept telling me yeah. in different ways, I guess. And so um they they wrote me, she's like, babes, you need to be selling in stores. Uh there's you have two page feature. I'm like, what? So that's where all my connections of sales repping came in. I called all my stores and I was like, hey, I'm gonna fly to New York. I'm in style. Do you wanna be featured? And whoever placed the the best order I was gonna go with, and I had then three store place orders. And so I'm like, all right, I'll divide it all up. And that's how I started. Unreal. That's how I started the Erica Pena brand. Wow. I, I, <laughs> these are the greatest stories, right? Like when you go, look what I did to get to where I am. See, this is like the true, the grit, right? Like the grit, because there's a lot of different copycatters. There's, I mean, people are doing their thing and good on them, but it's the ones that are the grit that really, really make it happen. Yeah. And I, I love that. So tell me <laughs> about um, like the values of the Erica Pena. Like where do you, what is your values that you hold within you know, the brand, yeah. you know, who wears it? Like, how do, how do you frame that as a brand? So what we value most is um, really having a customer that loves and understands our brand. Mm. It's not about, oh, can you wear, like, I don't want just any person to wear a brand because they're a celebrity or the, I really want them authentically to love it yeah. And, yeah. and believe in it. Same with our stores, same with our clients, with everybody. Because we, whatever we make, we make it with love. My style is not for everybody, mm. which I understand that. So because some people are like, oh, can can you can you make it less fabric? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's not what it me. is. And that's okay. I'm not offended. I'm just of like, course, like I was like, you were going to want to go to another brand that's a little bit sleeker. You know what I mean? I'm 17 meters. Yeah. I love fabric. Um, the fact that with you the wind like, all no, day. The fact that you say, I'm 17 meters, like, you know. <laughs> so I, t I stay authentic. Yeah. I don't try to follow trends. Mm. I will always do what I feel that I love, what I feel is good. Um, so to me, that's longevity that keeps mm. a client. You might lose people over time, but you stay with your true artist mm, core. Like yeah. you don't ask Picasso to go do, you know, go gone. Like yeah. he's Picasso, you go to Picasso for Picasso. So yeah. to me, that's really important. Um, we like to lift up other women. We believe in helping our peers. I. I do mentoring. I love helping other designers. I have on 27 under my belt that I've mentored and they're all thriving and they're all doing amazing. Wow. And I try to post them as well. And I feel like in this world, mm. you are not my competition. Yeah. If I'm doing me, I got to worry oh, about me. With I don't know to worry about yeah. you because yeah. you got you and you shine for what you, mm. you give. 
You know what I mean? Mm. So to me, that's really important. Focus on your assets, not your defects. Focus on what you could give and what you could bring. And um, yeah, I think that's my values. Yeah. Honesty, do everything with love and don't sell yourself out. Just, you know. Well, like, I mean, that's what I love about your brand is that no matter what, you just always, just you just, you feel sexy. You feel very goddessy, right. very ladylike. You know, like there's days where I'm like, oh, you know, I put my hair back, put it in a braid and I'm like, just throw on one of these numbers. I'm like, hey, you know, you fancy. Right. That goes on. It's like, here I am. That's why I designed it. Some days you you're know? not feeling it. Like when I made um, the other style, the Ella, I was a 42 year old mom and I, I was a late mom. Took a while, but I I got my miracle child, and I I. I wanted to wear all these things. I wanted makeup and then a childbirth. I was like, no, it's not go as planned. And then people visiting me and I, I just like, wanted to look yes. fabulous. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to design a beautiful robe that at least if I walk around, people are like, oh, how beautiful. They'll be distracted by all the fabric. <laughs> they won't see me like with the not hair and not have slept in 10 hours. And, and then I could clinch it with a beautiful belt and then, you know, make it look fabulous. However, so yeah. Yeah, so that's where the creativity comes in. So tell me about how your brand, like you have a daughter. How old is she now? She's Seven? four. Four. She's four. Yeah, she's yeah. four. And so how is her coming into your life, you know, reflecting on the brand? I mean, because like I'm a mom, you know, I'm almost 50 and Hannah Lay's 15. And I, no matter what, I always just so, feel so beautiful. And you had Hannah Lay and I in your goddess. You yeah. know, that got that the um, goddess series, the goddess series. Gosh, it was amazing. We're night together. I'm like, gosh, it was so beautiful. So how now that Valentina's, you know, getting a little older, how does that playing into your relationship with how, how you so parent the well? goddess series I wanted to do to honor other women I love and respect mm -hmm. that wear my brand and really stand for what my brand is. But mm -hmm. each of them is different yeah. in their own different way. Yeah. So we had the beautiful Jane Hitchcock. Oh, She's yeah, a 68 her. year old icon, yeah. fashion icon. Oh, yeah. She was at the level of, um, I forget her name. What is this? The, no, Twiggy, I, Twiggy, 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 yes, thank you, sorry. Oh, yes. And yeah, um, back in the day, yeah, right. She's been in vogue, so, oh. it, you know, I just want to show that my brand is timeless. And then you and your daughter, mm. I love that your daughter mm. is in that same track of finding her design and her eye, and mm. she has it. It's just, she's developing, develop you know, developing, yeah. curing. So, um, and of course, I wanted to feature you. So, the goddess series comes because all my dresses, what we design is so everyone feels like a goddess. So why not honor the goddesses that already wear our stuff and show other women that you could be any size, any color, any mm, age, yeah. come from different backgrounds and it defines goddess. You don't have to be a supermodel. You don't have to be a certain height, color, weight, like none of that. Like. It's the energy you exude. And when you love yourself and you feel fabulous, you give that energy mm -hmm. and then people feel that vibration and they feel it as well. Mm. And they, they vibe from it. And then Valentina, um, she was the best thing that ever happened to me. I prayed for her. Um, she was a miracle child. Um, she came into my life at such a, a beautiful time. I just fall in love with her father. I'd just gotten divorced met him, I was turning 40. They're like, you're not gonna meet anyone. Everyone's like, ah, la, la. And, oh, it's your tool to have children. I'm like, listen, no. <laughs> I'm a goddess, I'm a creator. I'm gonna create the right thing at the right time for mm. me. And yeah, I met my husband, Scott, and fell in love. And we had a couple miscarriages, but finally we got Valentina. Mm. And, and she's actually really, helped me with my brand it just i don't know she just pushes me to do more mm -hmm. and she loves wearing it she walks around the house mommy room <laughs> and it's because she's been at every photo shoot like totally. throughout throughout like <laughs> her life so she's always seen that so um and she loves it she lives for fashion mm -hmm. she goes oh mommy you look sexy <laughs> oh you look good at mom. four yeah that's at all how three and two be. she was saying she's like or she, mom, I think you could do a little bit better. Why don't we do a red lip? And I'm like, all right. So she's funny, and but yeah. we really, we really bond. And um, I just want to teach her that she is capable of anything she puts yeah. her mind to, you know. And I want her to feel good in her own skin. 
So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, it's so important. I remember because for a while there, Valentina wasn't in your like social media. Like you really, you weren't like when I first met you, I was like, who is this Erica? I was trying to figure you out. <laughs> who is this Erica Pena? Like, what's yeah. your stories? You weren't really like showing you and her, but it was probably because you had just had her. I just had her. I didn't her. know any of this. I wanted to be in my little cocoon yeah, right? and I wasn't sleeping. I did not look fabulous. <laughs> 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 No matter how many Erica Bay dresses I put right. on. No, but I, I, my social media person, she's like, listen, you have to, people love seeing you. And yeah. I'm like, and I love connecting with my customers. So I said, really? Okay. I didn't think my life was that interesting, but okay, sure. And then they love it. I so know. now I do a feature every day yeah. and um, just to show our, our life in Bali. Yeah. You know, we have a very special, unique life, I feel. You know, it's not for everyone, but we love it. And it's so cool. Amazing things happen. You right? Know, like, well, it's so funny. Yeah, because here we are in my studio in Bali, right? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you kind of got to go down the stairs all the way down. <laughs> and like, she's, Erica goes, well, thank goodness I didn't wear my stilettos today. Because <laughs> if you're watching the show, you're like, oh, it's so fancy everywhere. No, we got the ocean over there. Yeah. And the dog's over there. The monkey outside. The monkeys are out there. <laughs> but isn't it like that is, it's so cool. Like with Bali, with the way that we choose to live. When you, when did you get here though? So like all this was happening. So the reason I, I, yeah, like I moved right? to Bali, um, I had been manufacturing here. I had been manufacturing in Puerto Rico. We had our, we had a house and we had workers and we'd all sit at the table. We'd all do it together. I loved it. We'd talk and eat and I'd look at a map. Oh, we're shipping it there. We were Such a Dominican thing. Yeah. Right? Sitting together. It was like community yeah, of women. Community. I really, yeah. really liked that. Yeah. So um, then the 2008 recession happened. Mm -hmm. So I had like orders from, uh, Fred Siegel's, I had, every, everything was canceled. So it was like, whoosh. so I was like, all right, Erica, this is where my immigrant survivor kicks in. I was like, we gotta, okay, we're gonna have to go to Asia. Um, we're gonna have to take this out. We're gonna have to do other things. So my friend said, come to China. We came to China. Although it was, it was cool there. It, it, I didn't, feel the same energy that mm, I feel in yeah. Bali. Yeah, it's so different. So I came with a friend in Bali and I I loved it. Like I postponed my trip three times. The first, I, I think I was here three months. Like, but did you remember Bali through all the things in your life or, or did that stuff start reflecting? No, my okay. friend invited me. So you were just like, oh, it's fine. And you're like, wait a minute. Wait I'm a minute. When I got here and I saw the rose because um, Legion uh, was all like shelled, all the right. Nakar shell lamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw all of that, right. it hit me. I yeah. was like, oh my God, this was my epiphany. This yeah. is what I was supposed like, to be. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so then I um I came here I started uh, manufacturing and I would come like two or three times a year I was living between Spain Puerto Rico I had a store in Puerto Rico and Miami so I was always on a plane I was always in a Troy show I was going around I was married um it was hard having a long distance traveling and living in three countries being married so and that he was not the right person for me but it was good that it happened that way. And um, we got divorced. And after my divorce, I was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna move to Bali and do yoga. My family thought I was a little loopy, but they're like, all right, she's going through she's things. Do, yeah, so we'll, let's, just, we'll just let her go. We'll give her a break. And then I, I did, I was like, yep, I think I'm just gonna move to Bali and I'm gonna have a child on my own. I'm gonna be 40. Yeah. this is. This is I had a friend who was like, I'll be the donor. I was like, all right. I was having contracts signed. I was like, this is happening. You were planning it. Yeah. Wow. So, and then I slowly started coming back. And one of the top resorts in, um, in Puerto Rico had contacted me and wanted me to do um, their resort. Like, they're curated and do all the uniforms and do all the dresses and do all the necklaces. So I said, yeah, sure. That could be fun. I could do that. That's the Ritz Carlton Dorado. They have five reserves in the world. So I work with um, like two of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, yeah, I'll come to Bali. And that's when I start coming. And then I start posting all the necklaces and then all my stores started contacting me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I totally forgot about the Obama earrings. Wait a minute. Hold on. Bring it. Rewind. Bring it back. <laughs> All right, ladies. <laughs> so we got some lamp earrings. Now we got, okay, what happened here? So <laughs> the main reason, so I, the, I did the Obama earrings for Beyonce 
she wore them. Like, Ty is her stylist. Like, they've been together since she's, like, 13. Um, I think he's, like, a cousin. He's related in the family. So Ty and I are friends. So we met back, way back in the day in, in New York, and he... He saw that I did the Obama earrings. I'm like, you think B would like these? He's like, oh my Wait, God. what are the Obama earrings? I don't know what they are. Obama. So B, they were huge. They came out as the first time fashion influences politics. And even, no way. I didn't know even I Obama that. like thanked me. And Oprah, and I was supposed to be in Good Morning America. Yeah, I was on every Yahoo Worldwide. It was crazy. <gasps> That's what I'm known for, the Obama <laughs> earrings. I don't even I know I get this. stopped at airports for the Obama <laughs> earrings. Yeah, so which is is great. So it was awesome. O like a hoop, and yeah. then it had the bama. So in case he didn't win, you could take him off and still wear them. <laughs> Just in case, you know, you gotta have a backup awesome. plan. But we were hoping he was. This is for his second election. Wow. So Beyonce wore them, and it went viral. And it was on Coco Paris. It was like on the cut. It was on Vogue. It was like page six. I was getting articles all over the world. Oh I came goodness. out in like um. 780 art. It was it was insane. It was in the like every Yahoo. Like you know when you open your Yahoo back. Yeah. Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Yeah. Minimals. <laughs> millenniums don't even know what that is. <laughs> Oldies use <the> Yahoo. <laughs> um. So and it was like everywhere. Oh, and then no. I was supposed to fly up to do a Good Morning America show, but the hurricane hit. <sighs> Sandy, Hurricane Sandy. No way. So yes. you didn't even get to go. I didn't get to go, but it was fine. Whatever. But um. But the crazy thing is when that happened, I was just getting my divorce and I was going through like a depression. So it was insane. It's kind of like... It was like... Rah, rah, rah. Well, did that lift you up and kind of out of it? And you're like... It Ugh. kind of made me go into a self-healing program yeah. and I found myself. Yeah. And it was a blessing in disguise. But it really launched my name worldwide. Wow. Like before my brand had sold in like a thousand stores, like mm -hmm. I'd been everywhere. I'd sold in, I don't know how many, over a hundred countries. But now this really propelled me. Yeah. Till this day, yeah. wow. I still get asked about the Obama earrings and I'm so grateful and I loved oh, Obama. Yeah, wow. Do you have them. the first pair? Do you still have yeah, them? Yeah, I have a pair. So yeah. cool. So I kept a pair. And Did you then, ever give them to Michelle? She yeah, win? she Michelle had a pair, Oprah, like everybody. Oh, like it was, it was that's really so crazy. cool. It was like people were like tagging me and tweeting, and I was just like, oh my god, I didn't. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, so then, right. hey, hey, that's a lot so longer then, than fifteen, you know, seconds of fame. No, it was good. I sold them for two years in a row. It was wow. yeah. They got me out of debt. I love <laughs> the Obama era. Yeah, we're, 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 I still get people writing uh, to me about them. But um, then after that, I did the tour with Beyonce because mm. I was actually, I did her first album and for the Voodoo the album, the first one she released. And it was amazing. I did, because I did a whole like Santeria thing. Yeah, she was a picture I remember seeing. So that might have been your dress yeah. where it's like really yeah. blowing back. Well, no, that, she didn't do that. I didn't do the dresses till later on. I okay. fully just did the jewelry okay. first. Yeah. And then I got into the dresses about 10 years ago. So yeah, I've had a 22 year directory. Girl. Yes, <laughs> so I've been around a while. But yeah, it's, it was always, there's always been like this, these moments and these things. Mm -hmm. I'll tell, like Kim Kardashian was in my first reality show pilot. We'll go into that in another show because that's a whole other thing. <laughs> it's crazy. No way. I've been, yeah. Oh it's, my goodness. Well, so yeah, but I don't, I, I don't talk about it much. I, I kind of moved here because I wanted to escape from too many people knowing me. I know yeah. it sounds crazy, no, but it's, I, it's same, in Puerto Rico, you know? Puerto Rico is this big. Yeah. So it's not like, but I'm like one of the most well-known designers. Sure. I'm the first yeah. designer that was in five Vogue's. I'm yeah. the first designer yeah. to do stuff for Beyonce. So I'm like, you know, there's Jayla, Ricky Martin, there's Mimi Pabon, there's America Pena, yeah. so I'm Alaska. So, so yeah, so during that divorce, during that time, people would, you, you couldn't do anything. People were watching your every move. Mm. If I'd go out to dinner with a guy friend, they're like, oh, she's dating. And it was just, I didn't want it. I just wanted to live somewhere where no one knew what I was doing. Yeah. I could just be wild. I could go in my little boutique. I could dress people. No one cares. And just live a a cool, natural. Grounded Grounded. Space. Yeah. Grounded life. life. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's why it's interesting that you say that. So many people are like, why, why, why? I'm like, because I'm so out there. When I get to the States, you're like, oh. man, when you come back to Bali, you just feel so safe. It's like your little family's home. 
you know? And so now you've got your amazing studio here and there's yes. something even bigger coming out, which I'm really excited about because tell us about this living what, what, oh, what, oh the, the, the yeah, style the lounge, style lounge. Yeah, so i was like Ooh. which one there's one. Like, you're like uh oh <laughs> i don't know the style lounge okay so we're doing um just because i do loan for a lot of photo shoots um and we get some of the most affluent and most prestigious artists here from all over the world and sometimes there's no not many stores to buy high heels no or none. to get belt none none, none. <laughs> i have all um, of your belts right <laughs> like it's so it's it's really it's with so many so designers get, and everything yeah. here it's kind of crazy but um i was like you know what I'm going to do a style lounge. So it's it's more of a rental department. It's mm -hmm. called The Collective. And it's we're going to have all my dresses of Erica Pena, some designs that I do, special designs that I do for shows, celebrities, stuff like that will be there as well. Um, all our jewelry and then other brands that I love that I wear um, that are from all over the world. And some designer pieces, designer handbags, designer shoes, because you know I love to shop. So, <laughs> well, why not share the, yeah. you know, share it? Share because it's it. true. Like, I have, when you came in here, my studio is like usually just racked. And I have every Erica Pena dress. And I'm like, I've got to actually talk to Erica. What am I going to do with some of the stuff that I don't wear? You know, like, is there like ways that there's trades or things like that? Because it's true. Like, we, I bring all this stuff back into New York, I wear it once or twice on my show, and I'm like, Kind you of. could recycle it. Yeah, like so. how do you, and this is, it's brilliant because in Bali, on Bali, there's not a whole lot going on. There's one fashion, other one. Like, yeah, but she's more of a studio photographer, but mine is more literally just a wardrobe. So you come in and head to toe, you could have jewelry, earrings, sunglasses, oh hat. Like you're an, you're an influencer and you can't pack like a hundred luggages or you want, right. you want to have a fabulous Prada or a Gucci bag or, or you just want to wear a Valentino or you want an Erica Pena dress or whatever, like photo shoots. Photo I mean, shoots, so many, yeah. Right. You could just rent it. So we have different packages. It. Um, um, when it launches, so there'll be the package of you're just renting the one piece. So of course that's a higher price range. Mm -hmm. But then the low as as you rent more. So if you rent six pieces, you get a better price range. So then it turns out to be like ha half of the price of the other one. Because my thing is I want you to rent more yeah. and wear more, so you have the whole look. We need a subscription, and and we're gonna have memberships I mean, as well. Yes. You know? Yes, we're going to have memberships as well. I and you're going to get a store voucher for each time. Yeah, see, this is brilliant. So I then if you really love something, you could come to the shop and get something new and use some of your credit from from the shop, from the, sorry, the collective, the rental department the collective. in the shop. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Yeah. I love it. So Erica ben has got our shop now here in Bali. Yes. In, uh, uh, on we have Ponte three shops. Brawa. Yeah, so we have Brawa, we have Ubud, and Semenyak. They were closed during Brawa. COVID, oh, but yeah. um, thank God we got to keep them. We got every, everyone stayed employed. Yeah. We were able to keep everybody running, mm -hmm. and we've reopened, and they're super busy. Awesome. Ubud and Monkey Forest. Yeah. Um, you could also Google it, and um, Mexicola Street, that's where I tell everybody. We have the Erica Pena shop there at the corner, and um, in Brawa. And hopefully we'll be opening something soon in Uluwatu, oh, I would hope. Hey, yeah. let's hope on this one. <laughs> yeah, that would be really nice. Um, and is is there any more at Arcavinia shops worldwide? or own the main shops here? Because I know you do a lot online. So I design, I do sometimes Erica Pena for anthropology, or ah. they just buy the line. We sell like Bloomingdale's UAE. I sell Selfridges. I sell to Zoom in Russia. I sell um, Beaumarchais Paris. Um, hope Revolve coming soon in January, Erica Pena at Revolve. So we sell many boutiques mm. and huge retailers worldwide. So um, I would love to have Erica Pena boutiques as a franchise, but um, the right opportunity hasn't happened. So mm. who knows, maybe in the next couple of years. Ooh, calling it in. So what, yeah, what is next? Is something like that next for you? Yes. More expansion? So uh, I, I would love to, yeah, I would love to franchise. Mm -hmm. um, I see my stores in London, in Dubai, in, in Dubai, Moscow. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, I these. see in New York. I just, I see this energy mm -hmm. 
this goddess tribe as a worldwide phenomenon. So and I want to be... I want to be able to touch everyone that comes to my shop, feels it, gets the whole experience. Because you don't get that unless you come to Bali. Mm -hmm. And I still have people that talk to me about, oh my God, I loved when I come to your shop in Bali and the experience. So I feel like now and day, it's just online, which I love online. It's we've lost that connection yeah. and that, um, that human interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And I just as a little girl loved going to the a boutique and that whole experience uh, of shopping, yeah, of feeling beautiful, of having someone, oh, wear this, do that. It's like, so I feel like it's going more online and mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is going to be something that's going to be niche in yeah, the future. Really, and, and something really special, yeah. you know, the boutique brands for sure. Like I remember going to Brawa, it's like, you know, the velvet, you know, curtain goes and the ladies are just like handing me stuff, wrapping you and <laughs> up and putting the belt on here. It's like, oh, I loved it so much. Yeah. And because I, you know, our distance and because we were close for so long, I would go, can you guys please set me up some dresses in large? So I'd have my own fashion show on here and the girls would come and bring me a big bin and yeah. I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> you know, but I love going into the shop and you create such a a beautiful customer experience. Thank you. And I just, I love your brand. I love everything Thank about you. you. Thank <laughs> you for being here. And yeah, shining your light and making all of us feel like goddesses that we are. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good.